This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is Deathmobile 2.0. This homegrown in the USA, wooden built sim racing chassis goes for only $85 and allows you to put any seat that you can come up with right onto that design. Now that is downright cheap. This rig comes to us from none other than Sean Cole, and he will sell you the plans to build your own version for free 99. Then you can source your own wood, your own seat, and build your own version. This version we're testing today comes pre-assembled, and I don't even wanna know what it would cost to ship it as is. Now, you know I'm somewhat joking, but when I built the Deathmobile 2.0, I actually thought to myself, how does this rig actually compare to, or how does it size up against rigs that might cost 600, 700, even a thousand dollars? Can this really stand up against those type of chassis? So let's go ahead and break it down real quick. Taking a look at the Deathmobile 2.0. Well, it is very square. It is very bulky. It is an unfinished nightmare looking sim chassis. Other than the screws to put it together, it is 100% made of wood, and it's not even the best quality of wood we have seen on the show. There are no added touches to the rig. There are no elegant lines or racing inspired looks to it. The finish is not only rough and ugly, but it could even be dangerous and leave drivers with splinters. It also seems to have unnecessary holes in some of the wood as if it had been pre-used on other projects. In fact, I detect a bit of warp to some of the uprights that is not only disturbing to my eye, but forces them to make strange clearance cuts to fit the wood into place. Very strange, much amateur, definitely Deathmobile. The Deathmobile's overall measurements are 24 inches or 61 centimeters wide by 48 inches or 122 centimeters long. And on its caster wheels, the top of the wheel deck is about 31 inches or 79 centimeters tall. I don't have an exact weight, but it's fair to say that this is one of the bulkier, heavier rigs that I have tested. The Deathmobile has a flat deck from seat to pedals, and the seat bottom sits about six inches above the pedals. With the adjustable seat, the Deathmobile can have a seat back anywhere from 33 inches or 84 centimeters all the way up to 41 inches or 104 centimeters, which should accommodate a wide variety of drivers. However, there are no other adjustments on the rig. There is no wheel deck angle or height adjustment on this rig. And there's also no pedal deck angle or distance adjustment at all. In fact, this rig came to me only drilled for my Sim Experience AccuForce wheel. That's a fine pick, but a rig should have all of the main wheels covered. We can look at the assembly of the Deathmobile in two different ways. Number one, as a reviewer, it came to me pre-assembled. All I had to do was actually drill the holes for my wheel, four bolts later it was in, use some wood screws to hold the pedals in place, and it was ready to go. Now in reality, we know it took me a couple of hours to actually plan out the rig. It took me an hour to go to Home Depot and pick up all the wood and screws and everything that we were gonna need. And then it took about six hours to build, cut, and do everything to finish it off, meaning that it was a total of a nine hour investment of time. And then you have to kind of look at, well, what is your time worth? But a lot of rigs do take some time to build. It's not like they all come pre-assembled like this one did. Now, when it comes down to driving, the Deathmobile 2.0, that's where it really shines. Starting with the Tenzo R seat, which was faded and seemed quite worn, the chassis was extremely comfortable. The seat was also at a great angle for driving, and with the reclinability, it had added comfort. I could see myself sitting in the rig, chatting after the race with no comfort issues whatsoever. My pedals are very flat, as in that they have no setback on them. So when testing other rigs, I find myself usually on the flattest setting that the rig can do. Well, that was the only way this one came, which was perfect, and it was amazing how the rig's front edge is exactly where my pedals are. But the pedal deck had no flex or movement even under the heaviest of usage. I have a very heavy duty brake and even in emergency braking, I didn't feel the rig move at all. The wheel deck was where I had my biggest concern. 
with no adjustability to the angle or height, it would have to be just perfect. And somehow, the Deathmobile 2.0 was right on the money, exactly where I wanted my wheel. I also question this chassis' claim that it was built strong enough for a direct drive wheel. Well, the Deathmobile 2.0 was solid as they come. Even crank up to higher force feedback settings, I didn't feel any wiggle, twitch, or movement from the wheel. However, I did think I heard a creak or two from the wood. Or maybe that was just Max, the dog. The overall driving position was a slightly relaxed GT position, and after hours of driving, I was still in total comfort. The comfort and the sturdiness are the eBay features of the Deathmobile. Oh, and the price. Did I mention it was only about 85 bucks plus a seat? And the last thing that comes to mind, which is something that I'm very critical of most rigs about, and the Deathmobile 2.0 actually excelled here as well, which is the overall getting in and out of the rig. Sometimes rigs are too low. Sometimes rigs are too hard to climb into. But the Deathmobile 2.0 was actually at a good height and had a great clearance to actually swing my legs in with the greatest of ease, even at my age. So I think I've told you everything that you need to know about the Deathmobile 2.0, but just to make it perfectly clear, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, that being that it is ridiculously cheap. Very solid. Perfect driving geometry for me. Built for my gear. Really comfortable. Easy to add on to. Just bolt it or screw it on. And now on to the not so good, starting off with the fact that it is ugly, not fancy, primitive even. No wheel deck angle or height adjustment. No pedal angle or distance adjustment. No shifter, handbrake, or keyboard mount. No monitor stand. Didn't fit mine, way too fat to fit under mini. Splintering creaking noises would need total customization to accommodate different gear. And now on to the bottom line. If you haven't figured out by now, this video was somewhat satirical. I mean, I designed the chassis. I designed it for my gear. I designed it for my sizing right here in the studio. However, that doesn't mean that there weren't things still wrong or things that still needed to be addressed to make it a perfect Deathmobile, like a monitor stand or some kind of solution for the monitors. I mentioned not having a shifter, a handbrake, or a keyboard mount, things like that. Those are the kind of things in the future that we can expand upon with a Deathmobile. And I think that's one of the features that I really love about a wooden Deathmobile type rig. You built it, you designed it, it makes it that much easier to build and design future expansion or changes. That's one of the things I love about this and one of the things that we're gonna continue to do with this very Deathmobile right here. And if you look at the good and the not so good, I think this is the first product that has ever had more not good than good. But in reality, everything on the good list, this rig does exceptionally well. Now in reality, building a rig just is not for everybody out there. Some people don't have the tools and that would be an added cost of course. Some people don't have the skills or the space or maybe it wouldn't even pass the muster when, it, when you were trying to figure or get this design into the decor of your home. So it's very understandable that many people actually will hate this kind of a rig. They're gonna want to just purchase their others. You have other people who they work very, very hard for their money and investing nine hours into a design and building phase and having it come out like this just isn't good enough. It would be just easier to buy a ready to go rig. And I completely agree with you. But the greatest thing about it, again, as I already touched upon, was that expansion. Let's go ahead and say, I love the modernization that comes with a Deathmobile. I mean, did you hear me right? Did I say modernization when talking about this petrified relic of a dated sim chassis design? And yes, I did. And I say modernization because it doesn't matter what sim racing throws at me tomorrow. I'm going to be able to build and adapt this rig to handle anything from button boxes to dashes to wind sims to even motion platforms and shakers. It's all going to fit on a deathmobile no matter what. You just got to design and saw and screw and add it to the rig. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this show. Be sure to follow the link below to our Simpit Live on Twitch. Whenever we do a live build, things like that, we'll do it live on Twitch. We'll have the edited version right here at YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel here as well so you can find out when we have our new review, DIY, or any other videos from the Simpit. Thank you very much for watching. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.